my lovely imps, it is time for us to talk about the long, 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 and by long I mean complicated, history of Twitter. It's actually not been that long. It's really only been like, I don't know, like two months or something. Uh, uh, Elon Musk bought Twitter or was kind of like forced to buy Twitter. He like memed about buying Twitter. This is the ancient history part, by the way. Uh, earlier this year, Elon was like, lol, 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 I'm going to buy Twitter, bro. Uh, and then he made an offer of like $45 billion to buy Twitter. And then he was like, just kidding. I don't actually want to buy Twitter. But he had gone so far and made so many promises in his lol, lol, I want to buy Twitter stage that the government ruled that he would be in severe breach of, uh, of, of numerous contract laws if he was to back out of the purchase. And uh, now some people might be kind of like, well, you know, why, why, why should we make somebody buy something if they don't want to buy it? Well, generally you shouldn't. You know, nobody should be locked into buying anything. If you decide like, I don't want this anymore, you know, you should be able to cancel your order or whatever, but this isn't a fucking McDonald's, okay? This is a company with at the time nearly 8,000, I believe, employees. So it's kind of a big deal if you go through the process and a lot of people like spend thousands, potentially millions of dollars getting their lawyers to write up paperwork, you know, meetings, etc. blah, 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 blah. That's a big deal. It's not a fucking McDonald's order. Um, didn't Elon also fuck the stock market when he backed out? That's another thing. See, because Elon Musk has been attracting the attention of uh, the SEC uh, and a number of other, uh, I don't know all of the, the subcommittees and blah, blah, blah that, uh, that have been looking into him, but he has gotten the attention of numerous financial regisl uh, uh, regulators in addition to the SEC. And part of the reason for this is because it is, it appears that Elon Musk realized that he could use social media to game the stock market. And an example of this was when he desperately, he desperately needed more money to leverage, but, uh, uh, but he wasn't allowed to sell his Tesla stock. So then in revenge, he tweeted Tesla stock really should be lower, which is given that he is in such a leadership position at Tesla is a pretty concerning thing for most investors. But see, he did that to get revenge for the fact that he couldn't basically get himself some cash. Now there's a lot of complicated uh, 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 minutia to Elon Musk's financial situation, but the long and short of it is, the guy's actually b basically broke. And when I say he's broke, I don't mean he's poor. He's not poor. He has a lot of things that he owns, but he doesn't have any cash. In fact, a couple of months ago, we covered a story where one of Elon Musk's former friends told a story about how he had to ask to borrow $15 to buy a, to buy a sandwich because he literally did not have any cash and he could not get any cash. Imagine, if you will, that you have $10 million and you decide to buy 10 houses, each of which are like a million dollars each. So you buy your houses, boop, 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 boop. You spend your $10 million. And now you are still a millionaire. You own $10 million worth of capital. But can you spend your house on a sandwich? No, you can't. Elon Musk is leveraged to fuck. What that means is that the dude can't buy anything. He doesn't have any cash. He's got no liquidity. He owns a bunch of property. He owns a bunch of stocks, but he can't pay for shit. So he got really mad about that. And then he said that his own company's stock needs to be lower, which caused an investor panic, which caused a ton of people to lose money. And then he said, lol. What? Did I mess up my math or something? Whatever, I said 15, $15, $15 sandwich. Oh my God. Uh, so Elon Musk 
uh, all of this is just the backstory leading up to the Twitter purchase. See, because this guy, uh, after his epic meme lord fake purchase of Twitter, well, the government was like, bro, we're not letting you just ruin people's lives on the stock market uh, anymore. And keep in mind, I'm a lefty. I don't really give a shit if investment bankers get fucked out of their garbage stuff. But they're not the only ones who get fucked. You see, because if a company has a really quick devaluation, that triggers internal panics as well. What that means is that people start to get fired, people start to get laid off, people start to get severely punished for the fact that the, uh, the company has gone down in value, workers get cut, people lose their jobs. It's really bad. Capitalism sucks. Wow, who would have thought? Um, and that brings us ultimately to approximately two months ago, give or take. And that was when uh, uh, financial regulation entities decided, hey, Elon, you actually do need to do this. You either need to buy Twitter or you need to pay upfront a, a cost for damaging the uh, uh, the company that you pretended to want to buy. And so he said, oh, fine. And he decided he was gonna buy Twitter. And he did. Now, since then, things have gotten really messed up. And I mean, like, super, super messed up. <laughs> the first thing that Elon Musk did at Twitter once he became the owner, besides posting an incredibly cringe photo. So Elon Musk is the, is the ultimate soy boy. I've said this many times. Um, he has the worst sense of humor. His sense of humor was like forged in, the, in the, the, the depths, in the absolute bowels of Reddit. So if you can just imagine the most Redditor joke that you can possibly imagine, you're just like, le epic bacon, he he may may, ooh, that is all of his humor. His whole entire personality was crafted through stupid Reddit nonsense. His first tweet about him owning Twitter uh, was to tweet him carrying a sink into the Twitter HQ. And if that didn't really make much sense to you, this is a reference to a right-wing meme um, where apparently leftists say on Twitter, say, let that sink in. Which I don't think leftists say that, but apparently he thinks that they do. So he was carrying the sink in and he said, I am now the CEO of Twitter. Let that sink in, get it? He's carrying a sink into the Twitter HQ. Let that sink in, guys. So um, that was where it started. And his, his besides that, his first action then was to <laughs> fire half of the people in the company. He was just like, yeah, what we need to do here is we need to call the Twitter team. So, and, and since then, it has just gone way downhill. Now, there's a lot of shenanigans, and we're gonna talk about some of the specific shenanigans of each of these waves of layoffs and firings, but I want you to just take one second and let that sink in, <laughs> right? Oh, sorry, I forgot. Um, yeah, just let it sink in for a second. So, it's November, okay? It was October for some of these people. And many of them were let off without any significant uh, uh, severance package. Do you under, do, are you starting to get an idea about the timeline here? November, October, November, December, ah, Christmas, Hanukkah, all the holidays, Kwanzaa, all, oh, all those holidays are coming up. Hmm, wouldn't it be particularly shitty if somebody was gonna fire a ton of people, wouldn't it be particularly shitty to let them go right before not only the holidays, but also winter when everybody's expenses go up because you have to heat your house in most places of the United States? Wow. So that action of just firing people, which already builds a lot of bad blood 
in any company was particularly uh, egregious in this particular case. Because keep in mind that none of these people did anything wrong. These people, I mean, maybe some of them had some issues with their performance, but 50% of the company was let go. Excuse me. So those people one day had a job, then they found out some asshole was gonna buy their company, and then a few weeks later, no job anymore. That is going to build you a lot of bad blood. And not just bad blood among the employees, it's going to build you bad blood in the entire industry. Because when you're talking about social media companies, engineers, uh, uh, PR people, it's a pretty small pool of talent, all things considered. There are only so many social media companies in the world and there are only so many people with the expertise to work on these. Word travels fast. Elon Musk has basically, since the purchasing of Twitter, been on a endless uh, journey of just gathering the most bad blood that he can possibly do. And it all started there letting 50% of the people go before the holidays. And unfortunately, it gets even worse as we're gonna get into. So, uh, God, there are so many things that we can talk about with regard to how, how Twitter has unfolded. And I don't even know exactly where I wanna begin uh, after the layoffs because Many of you have probably experienced, uh, if you're a Twitter user, you've probably already experienced the sort of um, performance degradation that can only really come when somebody fires half of the staff that is responsible uh, for that sort of thing. Um, I know I have. I am a Twitter, or I was, I'm not really anymore. I've, I've, as I mentioned before earlier in the stream, go watch the VOD if you're watching this in a video. Um, I, I'm leaving Twitter. I've been leaving Twitter for some time. I've been migrating over to other platforms. Um, I've, I, my main home has always been YouTube, obviously. Um, but I, I'm what would be considered a Twitter power user. I tweet a lot. I retweet a lot. I engage a lot on Twitter. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, from when, when Elon Musk's team took over, the performance on Twitter went into the can. I every single tweet I have actual like I was just taking screenshots just to see I have like a dozen screenshots just of times that I thought about it when either my phone app or my desktop app just completely refused to send tweets that's what the website does you're supposed to be able to send a, a tweet that's the the whole reason the website exists so that you can tweet and if you click tweet and it breaks and you have to click it three four times and you keep getting an error sorry something went wrong and it's even worse if you're trying to upload media oh my god it's terrible not only that but dms have been busted uh group chats which are one of twitter's more used features totally busted and now there are widespread reports of issues with authentication, AKA people getting locked out of their accounts, sometimes permanently, and people just losing access to their other accounts. Twitter forgetting that they have, that they've been signed in on multiple accounts and you just lose it. That happened to me this morning. Twitter forgot all three of my accounts that I was actively logged into that I keep up because I have a private, I have a, a writing account that I do my writing on, and I have my main account. Whew, it's been wild. <laughs> but the most amazing and interesting parts are not the technical faults, but the egregiousness the absolute egregious way in which Elon Musk has been trying to uh, intimidate his staff, not to mention the fact that the guy is getting so triggered. I'm not kidding you. Like the guy is getting so mad at people responding to him negatively that today he literally issued a statement saying that he's going to be cranking down on negativity, negative posts, because so many people have been roasting his ass on Twitter and he's been posting through the pain the entire time. And now he's like, we're banning negativity. It's absolutely incredible. 
Um, we're going to talk about, Demon Speaker brings up, this is actually a really big security issue with Twitter having its defenses down and holding so many DMs between literally country representatives. We're going to get into that in full in just a minute. But I wanted to, um, <laughs> I wanted to go over some of the like absolutely ridiculous things that, that this guy has been, <laughs> this guy has been saying on here. This is one of my favorite ones, okay? Oh God, this is such a good one. All right, I'm gonna show you something real quick. By the way, I'd like to apologize for Twitter being super slow in many countries. The app is doing over 1,000 poorly batched RPCs just to render a home timeline. Now, somebody responds here and says, the slow part, the last hop, is a single API request plus CDN, and the back end in general is not the slow part, regardless of batching. This pattern is well established with other small similar services, with other similar services such as Facebook. DNS, time to first byte, and payload size are the most important. Now, this was one of the first of many people that then ended up responding to Elon Musk to the point that his tweet got a community warning, a community infor misinformation correction placed on there. Not only did it turn out, was, was this engineer actually correct about the functionality of Twitter, but Twitter doesn't even use RPCs. They use a completely different system. He was just talking out his ass. It's really funny. And then, let me just show you this real quick, because this is where it gets really funny. Here's somebody else pops in and says, I agree that Elon is wrong about why it's slow, but it feels like the home timeline loading takes seconds recently. Not sure why. By the way, that's something I'm sure many of you have experienced, um, <laughs> uh, which is the, the, the Twitter loading incredibly slowly. And then this person responds, interesting. Unfortunately, I believe the team that was in charge of monitoring client-side performance was entirely laid off. Remember how I mentioned that like 50% of the staff was fired at the beginning? Well, that was just people that Elon Musk himself deemed unimportant. Afterwards, a numerous, a, 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 a string of other waves of layoffs occurred in, in addition to resignations. Twitter has lost entire functionality teams. As in, there isn't, there's nobody there who can even tell you how to begin to fix the problem. It's like, it's like if you went over to a friend's house and there was a fire in the kitchen at your friend's house while you were there just hanging out. And then your friend came screaming into the room and said, where's the fire extinguisher? Where's the fire extinguisher? And then you said, I don't know, it's not my house. And then you said, don't you know where the fire extinguisher is? And they go, I don't know, it's not my house either. And you just found out that your friend had just invited you over to somebody else's house and was just squatting in that house. And neither of you have any idea where the fire extinguisher is. So you both just die from the house burning down. That's, that's literally what is going on at Twitter right now. So many people have been laid off that the, even if they hire new people, the, the new people coming in don't know where to look to find the things that they need to do the thing that they need to do. It is, it is cataclysmic. And this is just, this is just one of many such examples. Like I said, this guy has been like literally just tweeting through the pain. Let me, let me see if I can find real quick. I wanted to show, uh, I wanted to show a specific, oh, let me see, let me see. I want to show a specific engagement. Let me see if I got it here. I think I do. I think it's on my timeline, literally. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Oh, 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 where is it? Where'd I put it? Sorry about this one. Here we go. This is my tweet I made about this. By the way, Elon Musk publicly fired an engineering expert that told him this wouldn't work and would kill Twitter. So this is, this was Elon Musk coming in and saying, part of today will be turning off the microservices bloatware. Now, a lot of you might not know computer jargon. You might be like, oh, what the hell is that? What's a bloatware? What's a bloatware? A bloatware is uh, when you buy like a new computer, and there's like McAfee and Norton antivirus and uh, Kaspersky antivirus and 
uh, uh, whatever, all those like 900 antiviruses. There's 16 different uh, online only solitaire games. There's, you know, 26 different free trials. That is bloatware. Bloatware is the crap that uh, computer companies get paid to pre-install on your computer. There isn't bloatware at Twitter. That's not what that term means. So Twitter, Elon Musk is so stupid. He's, I don't know if like he just chose the wrong word or if he literally believes that like Twitter is his new computer and that the, the basic systems that were on it were like installed by Best Buy or, 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 HP to make his computer like, I don't know, to make a bit of money on the side. That's not how any of this works. Not even, not even goddamn close. Microservices are usually, uh, they're usually small parts of the website that, that run to make the performance better or to solve another issue that comes from Twitter connecting to other websites. Now, of course, is it possible that there are unnecessary microservices? Yeah. But if you'll notice here, in this tweet, Elon Musk says less than 20% are actually needed for Twitter to work. Now it's funny, because if that kind of sounds like he just pulled a number out of his ass, as it turns out, he did. Take a look at this. This guy named Eric Fraunhofer messaged Elon Musk. This is, uh, this is his conversation with Elon Musk, okay? Twitter is super slow on Android. What have you done to fix that? We have done a bunch of work to improve performance. So here's this engineer. I'm not gonna read all of this. This is his engineer. One of his senior engineers at Twitter is responding to him on Twitter, telling him exactly what the issue is and exactly why you can't just disable 80% of the microservices. He's fired. With this kind of attitude, you probably don't want this guy on your team. He's fired. Elon Musk literally publicly fired the guy on Twitter because the guy was like, please, we can't do this. Oh my God. And, and then when confronted on this, Elon Musk was like, well, he should have taken it. He should have done this through private channels. It later turned out he did. This engineer has been trying to bring this to the attention of Elon Musk for some time and initially contacted him on the company's internal Slack. Elon Musk was not reachable, did not respond in the company's uh, internal Slack. So the guy went to Twitter to try and desperately hope that he would stop this stupid idea of deleting bloatware from an internet service website. Just the level, like I said, remember how I said the whole thing is that he's been building up all this bad blood? Everyone saw this. Investors saw this. <laughs> Government entities saw this. Every single engineer in the tech sector saw this. Every single professional in the tech sector saw this. A lot of bad blood. It was on NPR, yeah. They talked, oh, NPR has been covering this like crazy. There's a lot of good, they have a lot of great coverage on this stuff. Um, oh my God, it's so ridiculous. Uh, there is so much, there is so many things that I can, here we go. Let's just talk about this one. Okay, here we go. We're going to jump to an article real quick because I prepared a ton of articles for us to look at. Let's take a look at this. This was from November 18th. Or wait, oh, this was updated. This was originally written yesterday. Hundreds of have said to have opted to leave Twitter over the Musk ultimatum. So I got to give some context for this. In addition to laying off 50% of the staff back in October, Elon Musk also stated that he would be, uh, that his goal was to uh, essentially create a new Twitter, which a new culture at Twitter. And this culture uh, he called Twitter 2.0. And in addition to a bunch of really weird requests that he's been making to his engineers, like for example, he asked a bunch of his coders to print off their pa pages of the code that they're most proud of, which I don't really know how to like, I don't really know how to explain to people who don't like code or anything. Cause I don't, I don't even code, but I've done coding in the past. That's like asking, that's like going into a McDonald's and asking like, 
one of the burger one of the burger flippers one of the like people who's like cooking out back asking them i need you to give me your the best burger that you've ever created and it's just like well i i gave it to somebody else i sold that burger was sold somebody else ate the burger like ask it like that, that's not even a good analogy but it's it, it's it's the same level Asking somebody to print off the best code that they've ever written doesn't even make any sense. That's not how code works. You don't just have like a line of code that you're like, this, this is the best darn code that I've ever coded. This line right here. Code is a part of a greater thing. Like, the, like always, it, it always is. There's no just single line of code that you can go look at how perfectly written. It's not like a piece of poetry. Uh, even that you can't even do that with poetry, but it's such an absurd request. But in addition to that, he's been putting out this idea that um, they're going to need a new Twitter culture and that he's been calling it Twitter 2.0. And um, recently, uh, he, he issued an ultimatum, which is that he said that by yesterday, November 17th, I believe it was yesterday. Um, a uh, uh, anybody who wanted to stay on the Twitter team, anybody who wanted to keep working at Twitter, needed to uh, needed to go specifically into a Google form that they generated and agree to a a a, a new terms of employment. Now, if that sounds kind of crazy to you, that's because it is fucking crazy. Okay, imagine that you've been working, like all, a lot of you have like traditional jobs. I have a very non-traditional job because I work for YouTube. Crazy shit happens all the time. Everything changes every five minutes. But imagine if you were like working at your job and maybe at a hospital in an IT department or something like that. I don't know, whatever jobs you do. Imagine that you just came in one morning and they handed you a paper and it said, if you're not willing to completely change the way that you do your job, you're let go. You're, you're, we're going to let you go. We're going to let you go with three months of severance. So you'll have three months to try and find new work unless you agree to our new, uh, to our new work culture. Now, some people might say, well, a lot of that would depend on the work culture, right? Yeah, it would. We're going to talk about exactly what he wanted from his employees here in just a second. But that alone saying you just come in one day to work and some weirdo guy who just bought your company is like, we're changing everything. We already fired almost all of your coworkers. We've already uh, left you completely ill-equipped to be continue doing your job. Now we're asking you to change everything that you know about the way that you do your job. Now, there's a lot of different opinions about what it was like to work at Twitter but a lot of the Twitter people seem to have quite liked it. Um, like a lot of the people leaving, uh, I've read, I've gone and read like a bunch of blogs from people who formerly worked at Twitter. I'm not saying it was the best company on the planet, but a lot of people at Twitter seem to really enjoy their jobs. And many of them have been there for a really long time. I'm talking people who'd been there for eight to 10 years, people who've been just pounding away at making this website work. And they're asked, change everything that you do right now because of this guy's whims. Woo! Once again, there's that fucking bad blood. That's going to make a lot of people really pissed and then a lot of people are going to leave. And as it turns out, I guess to Elon Musk's shock, basically nobody agreed to it. They lost, uh, I've seen estimates up to 80% of the remaining staff. So just to take a step back and get an idea of, and I've been focusing on the staff here. There's more we got to talk about. That's why this is going to be a long segment. Um, I just want you to think about, let that sink in. Let that sink in. Twitter went from about 8,000 employees down to about 3,500 employees. And now estimates are saying that they're, they're currently at less than 1,000 employees. In the course of two months, 8,000 employees down to less than 1,000 employees. And as Cotton D-Pad brings up, a lot of the people who are still at the company are people who have work visas. Not to go off on a tangent, but this is kind of important to understand. In America, 
One of the ways that you can immigrate to this country is that you can be sponsored by a company or an employer. Um, it's kind of fucked up, uh, but it also kind of makes sense because obviously sometimes, like especially in the tech industry, you might need a niche talent. You might need someone with a specific, uh, a, a specific skill set, and you might not be able to find that in the pool of, of Americans that you're hiring, hiring from. So America allows companies to offer employment to somebody who wants to come to America, and that person can sponsor their immigration into the United States. And uh, it's a really complicated process, but if you lose that job, it really fucks you over. It can be incredibly, incredibly, incredibly hard to just find other work that will also be willing to sponsor you. It's not impossible, but especially consider that a lot of people who are in this position are being hired because they have a specialized talent. There might not be another job that needs that specialized talent. So you're fucked. And if you think about, if you start putting this all together with what's going on at Twitter, Twitter now functionally has staff that is hostage. Staff that likely had specialized knowledge, staff that has probably been there for a while, has have mixed immigration status, and now they can't leave. All of their coworkers have been fired. Uh, the work environment has gotten horrible, and their only option is to accept Twitter 2.0, which we haven't even described yet. Just wait until we get into Twitter 2.0. That's pretty fucked up, isn't it? That's fr that's pretty. F they've they've absolutely got these people by the balls. Now, a part of me thinks, damn, this actually is probably an area that Elon Musk did plan that. As far as like paring down the staff to the people who are essentially held hostage by the immigration system, that does seem like something that is a bit calculated. These are people who have to do what he says no matter what, because if they lose their job, they could get kicked out of the country. They could have to go back to a home country that might not even be safe for them. They might not be able to find another job. So he's got them by the balls. He can basically make these people do whatever he wants. What a terrible position to be in. Also, how would you feel if somebody had you by the balls that hard? How would it make you feel? Do you think it might breed a little bit of bad blood? And guess what? Those people have colleagues. Some of those colleagues were fired. Those people's stories are now also percolating out to investors, to the government, to the press. Whew. Have you ever seen the Death Wish films? So let's talk about Twitter 2.0 because we've been building up to, we've, we've been explaining the, the, the issues here and the problems with Elon Musk uh, 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 pushing this stuff in the first place. But we haven't actually talked about what Twitter 2.0 is. The first thing about Twitter 2.0 is that Elon Musk ended remote work. Now, for some people, remote work sounds like a luxury. And in some cases, it kind of is. Being able to work from your home is pretty cool most of the time. It's nice to not have to go drive into an office all the time. It's nice to be able to work where you're comfortable, to be around people that you care about, and to be able to be there if somebody in your family needs you for something. However, it's not really just a luxury. For a lot of jobs, it's literally the only sensical option. If you have a team of people who are working all over the globe to create a digital product, why would you ever need to have your entire staff in an office? Not only would you be spending an incredible amount of money, but you would also be restricting your talent for no reason at all. If you're making a digital project product, having people work from home means that you can access a talent pool that's literally global, with a few exceptions because of the aforementioned immigration stuff. You can, you, you don't have to worry about only hiring people in the city that your HQ is in. You don't have to set up and build multiple HQs. For Twitter, they might only need to have a handful of 
physical offices that actually house the servers and then there's a team that keeps those servers going and then everybody else can re can work remotely not anymore in twitter 2.0 elon musk has declared war on remote work to the degree that he's literally getting sued over it unironically uh, a disabled employee is already bringing a class action lawsuit against elon musk specifically because uh, uh there is a actual case to be made that forcing people to work in an office for no reason at all when your product is is digital can only serve to marginalize disabled people. Hopefully, they'll win. We'll see. <clears throat> Let's look at this article, okay? This is an article by The Verge, okay? This was published this was published uh early yesterday and updated late yesterday. Who, if anyone, does Elon Musk feel is an essential part of Twitter? Whose contributions are valuable and hardcore enough uh, to him? Would you be willing to bet your job on it? In new emails sent to Twitter employees today, to Twitter employees today and obtained by The Verge, Musk dares managers to approve remote work at their own risk. What the hell? I dare you. Yeah, I dare you. Get, go ahead, approve your employees for remote work. Managers who I have kept on staff, I might fire you for it. How can you, How literally, how can you ruin morale worse than literally punishing your managers if they make a decision that should be in their purview? Unless you're trying to be an authoritarian freak, who, control freak, who's able to tell everyone exactly what to do and when to do it. Do you think they're going to start having like, uh, like timed potty breaks at the, uh, at the Twitter HQ? Spoiler, they can't do that for a number of reasons <laughs> we're going to get to in just a minute. So there you go. There's the first bite of what Twitter 2.0 is. At the risk of stating the obvious, any manager who falsely claims that someone reporting to them is doing excellent work or that a given role is essential, whether remote or not, will be exited from the company. So, immediately, he is essentially implying that there are rats and spies among his staff. He's telling managers, if you don't tell the truth, how would you, first of all, how would you ever know if somebody wasn't telling the truth about somebody's performance? The manager's job is to determine that that is what managers do. Managers in a firm are there ideally they are supposed to decide like they're supposed to keep their their team in check. They're supposed to make sure that the people who are there are doing what they're doing. That's what a manager is supposed to do. And he's accusing his managers, the ones who remain. Keep in mind, these are the managers that have survived the first wave of layoffs and the second wave of layoffs and are still kicking around. Now he's saying, if you're fucking lying, I'll kick your ass. Just the level of patheticness is beyond belief. We're talking a level of just a, a guy whose soul is so cucked. He's so, his soul is so weak and, and insecure that he's threatening his own loyal managers who have stuck through all of this garbage that he's done. All the bad blood we've discussed so far. We didn't even get into Twitter blue, but we will. Um, and he's treating them like they're the imposter. Killjoy asks, do you think that Elon is completely fucked because he's down to about 300 employees allegedly and the majority are demanding or suing for severance? So basically he's a bank that has no insurance to pay them out now? Elon, Elon's in some financial trouble. And we're gonna talk about that at the very end because I wanna go over his financial situation and just how fucked up the situation is. And I wanna make a, a solid case for why Twitter is dead in the water. God, <clears throat> my throat's a little sore. Wow, my 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 voice has gotten uh, tired out on my little break. I should have been doing more warm ups. Let's continue, okay? Because we got we got more to talk about this. Here's his message. Um, 
Oh, this is the one. This is the link that I think that has. Yeah, here we go. Elon Musk demands Twitter employees commit to extremely hardcore culture or leave. This is the this is the bit that I wanted to read, and then we'll hop back to the other article. Elon Musk gave Twitter employees an ultimatum at a midnight email. Commit to a hardcore culture at Twitter or leave with severance. The Washington Post reported that Musk has asked Twitter employees to sign an online form by 5 p.m. yesterday, on Thursday, committing to long hours at high intensity. If Twitter employees refuse to sign the form, then they will reportedly receive just three months of severance pay. Former Uber engineer Gurgli Orsaz who has been reporting on Twitter's internal changes, says Musk's email outlines a Twitter 2.0 that will be driven by engineers with those writing great code taking a more important role inside the company. Remember the thing that I said about it not making sense uh, about him asking for the best bits of code? Well, it also doesn't really make much sense to have the company led by those who are writing great code. Code is almost always massively collaborative and it is always massively collaborative at a company like twitter it d doesn't even make sense the email arrived barely a week after musk's first meeting with twitter employees and two weeks after he ordered mass layoffs cutting roughly half of twitter's global workforce that's what we talked about before what works at spacex and tesla is people being in the office and being hardcore said Musk during his first meeting with Twitter employees following the cuts. That language was mirrored in the email. Going forward, to build a breakthrough Twitter 2.0 and succeed in an increasingly competitive world, we will need to be extremely hardcore. This will mean working long hours at high intensity. Only exceptional performance will constitute a passing grade. Twitter will also be much more engineering driven. Design and product management will still be very important and report to me, but those writing great code will constitute the majority of our team and will have the greatest sway. At its heart, Twitter is a software and servers company. So I think that makes sense. Twitter is a social media company. Twitter does not, is not a software company. It, it's not. The app is the software. The, the, yes, there is some software that is used, but a software company is Microsoft or old Microsoft. That's a software company. A software company is Adobe. Those are software companies. They write software that you install on your computer. So software and servers is not the same thing as he's fundamentally misunderstanding what it is. Just missing the ball by so far, he's not even playing the same sport. This guy showed up to a football game with a fucking, uh, a fucking cornhole sack. Just imagine thinking that Twitter, one of the most influential social media companies of all time, one of the weirdest, strangest, and interestingly most successful social media companies is software and servers. L and literally so wrong that he, it's just obvious he doesn't know what he's talking about. And this guy is the new authoritarian CEO. Let's continue. If you're, if you're sure that you want to be a part of the new Twitter, please click yes on the link below. Anyone who has not done so by 5 p.m. tomorrow will receive three months of severance. Whatever decision you make, thank you for your efforts to make Twitter successful. Musk previously pushed Twitter employees to launch a new version of Twitter Blue. You know what? We got to talk about Twitter Blue. Let me tell you the story of Twitter Blue. God, there's so much. Do you see why I had to make this its own entire segment? Oh my God. Twitter Blue. Back in the old days of yore, one month ago, Twitter Blue was a three dollar, uh, uh, a, a three dollar upgrade that you could make to your Twitter account. You could pay three dollars a month, and you would get the ability to edit your tweets. You would get some advanced analytics. I think you get the ability to add flair to your tweets. They're like little, I don't know. It it, it was it was a really really really, <laughs> uh, it was a really really small set of features. The edit was quite nice, but basically it was a way for, uh, for you to say, hey, I like this website. I want to have a few extra bonus features. You know, think of it like uh, Spotify Plus, you know? 
You know how you can get the free version of Spotify and then you can upgrade for $5 a month and you get ad free listening and the quality audio quality goes up, that kind of thing. That's what it used to be. The basically the moment that Elon Musk took over Twitter, he decided that Twitter Blue was going to be the future of the the platform. And initially, he said that Twitter Blue was going to cost $20 a month. $20 a month, which is insane. That is more than a Netflix subscription. That's more than a Netflix subscription and a Voodoo Plus and a Guju Plus and a Fufu Plus and a Log Burners Anonymous Plus and a, um, a, a, a YouTube Red, Red Tube Blue. That's all of those com combined. That's more than like 15, it's more than like three other things. You could get Netflix and Disney Plus and HBO Go, I think, approximately, for about the same price. You can literally subscribe right now to DemonMama.com for literally a fourth of the price. You could have a fancy name in my website and a fancy name on my Discord server and my hellish love for, for a fourth of the price of what Elon wanted. Now, obviously, a lot of people were like, why the hell would I ever pay $20 for an upgraded Twitter? Because who the hell would ever pay $20 a month for an upgraded Twitter? He got roasted so hard on it that literal celebrities were making fun of him, including Stephen King, the writer, the famous writer, in one of the most epic like misjudgments of clout that I've ever seen in my entire life. The reason why I say that is because Elon Musk might be the richest guy in the world because he ha he owns enough stuff that he's the richest guy in the world or whatever, or somewhere near it. He's somewhere up there. Um, but Stephen King is one of the most culturally important figures of the last 100 years. I'm not kidding you. Um, some people might not love all of Stephen King's work, but keep in mind that Stephen King has not only written like multiple bestsellers, number one best-selling books, but his books have the, his best-selling books have been turned into movies that are considered foundational films. Stanley Kubrick made a Stephen King film, The Shining, one of the most famous films of all time. Stephen King is so much more famous and so much more impactful and culturally relevant than Elon Musk. And Elon Musk uh, tried to clap back at Stephen King by being like, well, what if it's $8? Acting as though like Stephen King was being stingy because Stephen King is a multimillionaire. But Stephen King said, I'm not gonna pay 20 bucks for your crap product. Why would I ever pay that much? And then Elon Musk was like, well, you know, if it's, if the cost is an issue, why don't you pay $8 then? Oh God, it's so, oh my God, it's so bad. Oh my God, I was cringing so hard. Just again, like a, a complete miscalculation. And by the way, despite the fact that Elon Musk has millions more followers on Twitter than than Stephen King on Twitter. That's key word there. Even though Elon Musk has way more followers. I'm talking like Elon Musk has like 45 million followers um, on Twitter. He got fucking ratioed. The motherfucker got ratioed by a dude who's like on his own platform. He got ratioed on the company that he owns. Oh God, it was, oh my God. It's, it was so incredible. Just a level of cringe you can't even fucking believe. Just this guy is the cringiest loser. Oh my fucking God. <sighs> anyway, Twitter blue. I gotta stay on track here. After the embarrassing run-in with Stephen King, Elon Musk stopped pitching the $20 uh, Twitter blue. Instead, he said he stuck with the $8. Uh, he realized that he got blown the fuck out by Stephen King and he tucked his tail all the way up his ass so far that it popped out his mouth again. And then he said, well, okay, it's $8 now, but it's also verification. So 
Most of you here are probably familiar with how Twitter works. But just in case you're not, on Twitter, uh, it has traditionally been quite difficult to get verified. On Twitter, there's a little, it was called a blue check, even though it's actually, I believe it's actually a white check in a blue circle. Regardless, a blue check is somebody who is uh, validated by Twitter. It's, it's being an official account. Um, and it's a pretty big deal. You, you basically have to have some level of meaningful reach. You have to have enough fans that people can say, yeah, that's the real deal. That's the actual public figure. And then Twitter would hand pick people for verification. So it's a pretty big deal. Um, and also considered pretty important for celebrities who decide to make their social media home on Twitter. Because um, as it turns out, if you're a public figure, I'm a small public figure, and even I have these issues, it's super easy for people to pretend to be you and then take advantage of others. They impersonate you and scam people, and that reflects poorly on you and also hurts people. So it's pretty important to have a mechanism in place by which you can verify that someone is who they say they are, right? And. Um, and, and so, so the blue check was the way that Twitter did it. If you became big enough that your fans could basically petition Twitter, uh, then they would let you have a blue check and you would be the real one. So you have a validation that this is the real one and anybody receiving a message from another account that claims to be you is a fake. Easy, because yours is the one with the real check and has been verified. So Elon decided to make it so that blue checks would only be attainable by paying for Twitter blue. All of the people who had already been validated by previously existing Twitter no longer had that. So, literal years of incredibly important identity verification work that was done by employees long before Elon ever arise, ar arise by communities who took the time to, to like basically bother Twitter to get their, their favorite content creator or public figure a blue check, all the people who have issues with people impersonating them and got that fixed by contacting Twitter, just whew, gone a security nightmare. Just a misinformation security nightmare. Now, I already read a story about a musician, a relatively popular musician, whose account got hacked. Then someone purchased Twitter Blue and got the verification badge and then ran fake sweepstakes or giveaways that had thousand to thousand five hundred dollar buy-ins and a bunch of their fans got scammed, specifically because their account got hacked and then purchased a blue check so that they could get away with that. That is insane that that can even happen. But it gets worse because, of course, Elon Musk says, well, payment verification is super important, right? You can't just, you can't just fake a credit card except it's really easy to do that. You can literally generate on the fly a debit card in minutes through Cash App. You can buy a prepaid debit card in, in seconds at a Walmart. It's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly easy to fake a payment method. And in fact, it just makes things worse because as we saw immediately afterwards, this is the best part. Every single fucking account and troll on the internet bought a blue check for $8 with, a, with their fucking credit card or with, a, or with a, a PayPal, excuse me, or a throwaway debit or a Visa debit or whatever. And there were a hundred Elon Musks. There were a thousand different fake Elon Musks, all of them with blue checks. There, was, there were literally people impersonating the heads of state and tweeting at each other provoking war there were people who 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 fake oh my god one of the best examples oh my god let me show you this let me just show you the tweet 
Yeah, here we go. Take a look at this. Fucking incredible. Oh, I need to do 11 foot. Hold on a second. 12 foot. Here we go. Here's a, here's This works just as well. Here's the tweet. So right after uh, Elon Musk uh, put in his changes to Twitter blue, somebody purchased a blue check for this at Ellie, Eli, Ellie Lilly and Co. Now, this is not the real Ellie Lilly. Ellie Lilly is a uh, pharmaceuticals conglomerate that um, owns the patent for insulin or for one of the major forms of insulin, a vital drug for literally millions of people worldwide. It is a, a medically necessary drug for a lot of people to survive. Now, an impersonator posted this tweet and said, we are excited to announce that insulin is free now. Based! But of course it was fake. If you'll take a look at what this caused, the Ellie Lilly stock, uh, uh, what happened to the stock is literally billions of dollars were deleted instantly because of one troll who got the idea, based of them, by the way, to impersonate Ellie Lilly and say, um, and say, is it Eli Lilly? I don't know. I don't really care. Um, and, and say this. So it is pretty funny that that happened, but also it's a perfect example of how fucking stupid his verification system is. I... Look, I'm all for uh, internet uh, jokesters, memesters, uh, spoofers, gaggers, gaffers, uh, uh, jokesters, jesters, and tricksters in general. I think I said tricksters already. I, 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 I love you all. You're amazing. You're incredible. Blessings to you. But at the same time, this pretty much highlights the exact problem, right? Which is immediately what happened. So... Twitter Blue became a paid verification badge and immediately demonstrated that Elon Musk was talking out of his ass and had no idea what he was doing basically overnight. This happened almost immediately. And so some of you may have purchased a blue check before something happened, which is that <laughs> Elon Musk desperately tried to fucking cover his ass. And uh, as it turned out, he couldn't cover it fast enough. Everybody could see the diarrhea squirting out of the corners of his shitty pants. Um, <laughs> so the first way they tried to solve this problem was they locked Blue Check's ability to change their name, which is really weird. It, 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 it's very rare that you pay for a service and then lose the ability to do something because you paid for the service. But that happened. The first line of defense they had was to lock all blue checks names. Now, this had some funny results. Like for example, the fact that this happened right after Halloween. So tons of celebrities had temporary Halloween themed names that they could not change back. There are celebrities right now who have been unable to yet change their name, and so their name is now, like, uh, something the boo with a little ghost, and they can't change it. They're just now known as the Forever Halloween guy. Doja Cat's name was stuck as Christmas? Yeah, it's absurd. The lock was added for the previous blue checks, which started the impersonations before the feature was up. It's, it's absurd. What's the one you wanted me to talk about? Is there one that I forgot? Elon Musk currently shitting and pissing. Oh, we're gonna get there. So, um, oh my God, like, oh God. It's just, it's so funny. I saw so many people. There was a writer named Caitlin Burns whose name was for Halloween, what was supposed to be like a few nights fun, changed her name to Caitlin Boo Earns. But now her name is just stuck as Caitlin Boo Earns. It's absurd. Also, there are like a ton of Elon Musk impersonators. So, so let's get to that. After the failure of Twitter Blue, after the name lock that ruined everything, um, they decided a, 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 another tactic that they were going to try. Um, how do I even describe this? How do I even how do I even lay this out? I was saying Boo Earns, Boo Earns. Yeah, Kiki Palmer. Yeah, Kiki Palmer was another one who got who got uh, 
who got grabbed there. There was another one I was going to say. Oh my god. Hold on. Let me just let me just get my get my place again here. So the Twitter blue thing happened. The name changes happened. Uh and then there was they oh yeah, and then they suspended Twitter blue. There was another step in between. Why am I blanking on this? Oh yes, the parody thing. Thank you, brain. My god, ADHD moment. So Elon Musk was really mad after the whole debacle happened with the fake accounts, after the debacle happened with the paying for verification and being able to impersonate celebrities immediately because obviously, uh, Elon Musk was like, we need to do something about parodies. And the reason why he needed to do something about parodies was because every single time he tweeted, 900 accounts, all of them verified, which were named things like Italian Elon Musk, French Elon Musk, Brazilian Elon Musk, Musk, Russian Elon Musk, uh, uh, you know, extra large Elon Musk, all of these clones of Elon Musk. Every time he tweeted, there would be like a hundred clones, all with blue checks, who were just like, hey, I send a rocket into space, I'm making a Twitter blue eight dollars, hey! It was amazing. And so he got super triggered about that. And he was like, ah, we have to do something. We have to do something about the parody accounts. And his solution was, guys, you have to put parody in your description now. I mean, in your name. So first he said that you have to clearly demonstrate that you're a parody. Now they didn't say specifically what that meant. So a lot of people put parody in their, uh, in their description and the, or, or in a pinned tweet, which is, you know, the, that was the sort of common way of doing it before. That was not enough. So a ton of people who were doing good hearted and harmless parodies got turbo banned because that wasn't good enough. In fact, Elon Musk required now that you have to put parody in your name. But guess what? Blue checks can't change their name. So anybody who did a parody at any point and had a blue check couldn't change back. So there was a bunch of people who are now stuck as X parody and cannot get back, even though they weren't doing anything harmful, they weren't causing any disasters or anything. They just screwed up everything. It just, he just fucked up. He dropped the ball completely. It's so pathetic. Like I said, the most cucked man alive. Just so insecure. Oh, you have to put parody in your name, otherwise people are gonna keep calling themselves Italian Elon Musk. But it gets funnier. Cause, um, let me just show you something real quick. Hold on. Some of you may have heard of a uh, an actor named Daniel Radcliffe. And some of you have, have also might maybe heard of the musician named Weird Al. Now, uh, Weird Al is a really cool guy, one of the most accomplished musicians of all time. And there is currently in production in Hollywood, a biopic with Daniel Radcliffe playing Weird Al, I think he looks great. I think it's sick. I think it's, or yeah, it, it just came out. Sorry about that, it already came out. Um, that doesn't, that's not really all that relevant. Okay, now this is, this is where it gets really funny, okay? So Daniel Radcliffe, as a part of the contract for this movie, as a part of this movie, uh, has been for months, he has been he has been impersonating Weird Al on Twitter. So there's the real Weird Al account, then there's Daniel Radcliffe's account where he's dressed up as and acting as though he's Weird Al. And this is a part of the promotion for the movie. Pretty, you know, pretty funny. You know, I think that's great. I think that's a good way to market your movie is to have your lead actor basically play the role. But you can see, you can probably start to see where this is going, right? So. Daniel Radcliffe professionally acting, is professionally playing the role of Weird Al in a comedy biopic about Weird Al, has been doing it for months, the blue check things comes out, he can't change his name even if he wanted to, and then he got banned 
perma banned because he didn't put parody in his name when he couldn't change his name away from being Weird Al, or he couldn't. He also couldn't change it to be Weird Al parody, and so he got perma banned. Like I'm not kidding you. He got banned. Oh my god, it's so bad. Oh, I I don't know if they reinstated his account yet either. Let me check. Let me check if they actually got him back on. Did they get him back? I don't think they did. I don't think he's back. Look. Daniel Radcliffe. I don't see his official account here. No. He's, he's still off. They still haven't gotten him back. Look at this. It's only going through a name search. His account doesn't even show up. It's gone. It's only fan accounts now. Fan club, fan club, fan club, fan club, fan club. Talk about the most incredible failure you can possibly imagine. Just, oh my fucking God. Oh. Da so Daniel Radcliffe has had his career legitimately damaged because Elon Musk thought it would be funny to change Twitter's, to, to monetize verification on Twitter. And the worst part is, Let's just do some math real quick, okay? Let's just take a look. There are around 450 million, this is just off the cuff, we're gonna do some napkin math. There are about 450 million current users on Twitter. Now, that of course does not count repeat accounts, okay? So 450 million. There we go. All right, now, get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Give me my calculator back. So 450 million, we're gonna multiply this by $8, okay? Which is the current cost or the future cost because Twitter Blue has been canceled. We haven't even gotten to that, we'll get to that. So that makes $3.6 billion, okay? $3.6 billion. So if every single account on Twitter all purchased Twitter Blue, which would mean, by the way, that every single fake spam bot account also, because that's 450 million active users, that includes, like I said, that's all of the different accounts. That's not separating. Most people have more than one account. Almost everyone I know has a private and a public account. It's just how it is. But um, that would only make 3.6 billion. Do you all recall how much Elon Musk paid for, uh, for Twitter? It was $45 billion. So he would have to have every single person on Twitter subscribe for like six months straight to even scratch what he paid for Twitter, let alone the debts that Twitter already had. And this guy was trying to tell you that that $8 is gonna carry the company forward. It just, for over a year, sorry, over a year, you're right, my bad. I did my napkin math wrong, you're right. It would have to be 15 months, 15 months Every single active account, that's not possible. It's literally not possible. No one, it's not possible. It's mathematically impossible. And guess what? He tried to tell his investors that tw his new Twitter blue would be what made up for all of the uh, advertisers that jumped. Adidas jumped. Uh, uh, actually, I think, I think Adidas is the only one I can think of off the top of my head. I didn't look up the whole list. They have been bleeding. Let's take a look. Maybe I can just bring this up real quick. Here we go. General Motors, Pfizer. Yeah, the Pfizer that made the COVID vaccine. Uh, uh, the company that owns Oreos, Mon Mon Mondelez, uh, a mega corporation, REI, General Mills, United Airlines, Audi, 
IPG, a massive uh, con uh, international conglomerate that owns American Express, Johnson & Johnson, and Spotify. Carlsberg, a brewing company that owns most of the big beer brands in Europe. Uh, Group M, apparently, which is an advertising firm uh, uh, that that advertises for Hennessy, Louis Vuitton, and Moet luxury goods, and that's all. That's all the confirmed ones that I have right here. That's a lot of big names that have already jumped, and all of his investors were pointing out the fact, bro, don't you wait? Aren't we losing like a ton of money since these people aren't paying us literal millions of dollars to run ads anymore? And he's like, no, no, the $8 a month is totally going to cover it. You're, you're good. We're good. And then all of his investors looked in the math and went, oh God, oh my God, we're not good. We're all going to die. Oh my God, all our money is going to disappear. And then they discontinued Twitter Blue. So, currently, you cannot purchase Twitter Blue anymore. Oh yeah, Audi's out. And also, um, uh, uh, so is uh, Adidas. I know that one. Um, it lasted two fucking days. And you can't get it anymore. Now, Elon Musk has said that Twitter Blue should should be back by the 30th of November. And they're gonna change it, of course. But now they don't have a team. Now they're down to less than a thousand employees and he's saying they're gonna launch a new product that's gonna solve all of these cataclysmic issues that occurred by the 30th of this month. It is never gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. That's a lot of employee loss. I ran through the numbers at the beginning. At, at the beginning of Elon Musk's tenure, there were over 8,000 employees. There were approximately 8,000 employees at Twitter. There are now less than 1,000. They've lost 90% of their staff. No one actually, right now, I've been trying to find the exact numbers up to, I was, I was keeping an eye on articles right up till the beginning of this stream. And I was not able to find a perfect uh, count because this happened last night. The the most recent la mass layoff happened last night. And oh my motherfucking God, is there a lot to say about this? Yeah, <laughs> I love this here. I'm just gonna read this to you real quick, okay? All right. Here we go. This is the latest news, okay? As far as I know, here we go. Hundreds of employees say no to being a part of Elon Musk's extremely hardcore Twitter. Musk gave Twitter staff a deadline to say they are staying for his cultural reset. And right on deadline, the farewell emoji started pouring into Twitter Slack. Slack is a chat app. It's a corporate ch chat app. The fresh purge of Twitter's ranks comes after Musk recently fired dozens of employees who criticized or mocked him in tweets or internal messages. That was another thing we didn't even get into. He was firing people just for disagreeing with them and saying they were mocking him. So if anybody even dissented a little, he would just fire them. He then set a deadline of 5 p.m. on Thursday, yesterday, for all employees to respond yes on a Google form if they want to stay for what he is calling Twitter 2.0. Otherwise, today would be their final day of work and they would receive a severance package. After the deadline hit, hundreds of employees quickly started posting farewell messages, announcing that they had said no. I'm not pressing the button, one employee, one departing employee said. My watch ends with Twitter 1.0. I do not wish to be a part of Twitter 2.0. Twitter had roughly 2,900 remaining employees before the deadline, thanks to Musk unceremoniously laying off about half of the seven of the approximately 7,500 person workforce when he took over. De remaining and departing Twitter employees told The Verge that given the scale of resignations, they expect the platform to start breaking very soon. So this is where I'm gonna take just one second. Last night, there was a lot, any of you who post on Twitter um, uh, have probably seen uh, all over Twitter, the rip Twitter hashtag, everybody talking about the death of Twitter, people posting farewell posts, people sharing links to other social media. And the reason for this is not just because of a panic. 
It's because the employees who were responsible for making sure that Twitter doesn't go down were like, hey, I just got locked out of my account. I can't go fix the server issues. There's there's server issues right now and I can't go fix it. So the idea that Twitter is gonna die is like, it's as close to fact as it can possibly get. The people who walked out yesterday just said, I am in charge of like, Th this is so funny. Can I just show you? Can I just? I'm gonna jump and give you a bit of a of a uh, a bit of a spoiler. Okay, take a look at this last line. Twitter no longer has a communications department to contact for comment. Can we just? Can we just? Can we just like like? Can we just love this here? Twitter no longer has a communications department to contact for comment. The journalists can't even there's no one to reach out to anymore the entire communication department resigned yesterday when when people are saying that twitter is in a cataclysmic de death spiral they're not kidding it's it's so bad Twitter recruiters have already started reaching out to other engineers to see if they want to join Twitter 2.0, an Elon company. I'm not making that up. Unironically, this is the text that people are using, the recruiters are using. Twitter 2.0, an Elon company. Bruh! Holy shit! How much more stupid and egotistical. Okay, this is the part where... I have to feel like it's like a, I mean, his ego is so staked on it, right? This is a gamble of unbelievable proportions. Not only has this dumb motherfucker uh, literally gambled $45 billion on a company he has no experience with, where he immediately gutted everyone who didn't kowtow to his tiniest desires, but in addition, He's now staked his name to the degree that post firing everybody, post building up the the worst bad blood that you could possibly imagine, after alienating all of his staff, after alienating the entire tech industry, blatantly firing people in broad daylight on a public platform, now he's sending out emails that say Twitter 2.0 and Elon Company. This guy, this is how I know it's not just le epic memes. He's, he's stuck. He's so far in, he's so, the sunk costs are so deep that it is, it is terminal no matter what he does. If, if he goes forward, then his name is plastered all over one of the most magnificent tech failures we've ever seen and that everybody got to watch happen live. And if he tries to back out, then he's $45 million. I mean, sorry, <clears throat> 45 billion dollars in debt and i'm just gonna take this moment real quick my lovely lovely imps first of all if you're here and you're having a good time please press the like button you notice how i've been talking for two hours without asking you to like the stream press that damn like button smack it smack the like button first of all but secondly i want you to take just a second sit here with me it can be hard Life can be difficult, and sometimes you can feel like you're overwhelmed with your own mistakes, with your own struggles, with your own, you know, maybe wrongdoings, sins even, you could call them. However, my lovely imps, not a single one of you has ever gambled $45 billion and fucking lost. None of you. Just put that one in your back pocket. And none of you ever will. And that's great. Whew. Elon has taken perhaps one of the biggest L's in, in, in history. I can think of very few other L's this hard. Like Napoleon, maybe, marching into Russia in winter might be an L this hard. But even then, 
Napoleon could at least blame like his generals and stuff because he had, it wasn't like Napoleon, he didn't brand it like the grand Napoleon march into Russia in winter. Elon Musk is literally currently sending out Twitter 2.0 and Elon Musk company after, after literally walking up on a stage and shitting his pants publicly. The biggest L you could possibly imagine. No, Hitler took a pretty big lead into the head, not an L, difference. It's a pretty bad L. I can't think of anybody who's wagered $45 billion and lost this quickly and this hard. But the cuck Elon Musk. I have worked here at Twitter for over 11 years, one employee wrote in Twitter's sack, sl in Twitter's sack, in Twitter's slack, as the salute emoji emojis poured in on Thursday. Back in July, I was the 27th most tenured employee at the company. Now I'm the tw now I'm the 15th. That means 12, 12 more senior people were fired. So a person who's worked there for 11 years, as of yesterday, 12 other people more senior than him had already left the company. That is that is a that is a demented level. A absolutely demented level of of experience loss. Can you imagine if like you like I, I can't even I don't even know. Like what how else do you draw a comparison to that? How else do you like how do you quantify that level of knowledge loss? Do you guys really think that every single one of those 15 year Twitter veterans, some of whom have been there since the founding of the company, do you, do you really think all of them were just a bunch of dumb losers? Or do you think they were extremely talented, but Elon Musk's fragile cuckold ego wouldn't let him uh, listen to them? Which one do you think it is? You go ahead and tell me. Uh, well, I know the answer. Oh boy. Now, there was another thing I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, this one was from three hours ago, okay? So this is literally, I mean, there might be even more, but, and I'll check before we end this segment, but I wanted to read you this one, okay? Because this is a real banger. And then I'm going to do a little summary, okay? Because I because I feel like this has been a hell of a, has this not been a banger segment? Has this not been an absolute banger. By the way, there are 400 imps watching right now, which is amazing. You guys are fucking amazing. Thank you for watching my lovely, amazing imps. And you're having a good time, aren't you? You're having a fucking good time because that's what you get when you come to the first demon type streamer. Me. Oh, what's this one? Let me see. <laughs> Wait, Doja Cat, Christmas. I don't want to be Christmas forever at Elon Musk. Please help, I've made a mistake. Elon Musk replies, you should be able to change your name now. Elon Musk, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I told you the man is getting cucked by the second, okay? But this is what I really, this, this is, this one is going to seal it for you. Okay, ready? Watch this. Twitter loses payroll department, other financial employees as a part of the mass resignation under Elon Musk. Now this is a, this is a front page headline in Business Insider. Okay, so this is not, this is not Twitter news. This is a investor magazine, a magazine that is read by financial investors. 
a large portion of Twitter's financial organization, including its entire payroll department, left the company on Thursday in response to an ultimatum from Elon Musk that has seemingly backfired. Along with the payroll department resigning, Twitter's US tax team and its financial reporting team also resigned, two people familiar with the matter said, matching several internal messages seen by Insider. All three segments of the company were part of Twitter's finance and accounting organization. While accounting was less impacted by resignations on Thursday, that part of the organization is smaller now too. Employees are set to be paid again next week, one former uh, worker said. While those payments are likely to have been already approved, the next round of payments will not have been. How hard would you work at Twitter if you didn't have guarantee of pay past next week? Because as it stands, all of Twitter's remaining employees do not have guaranteed guarantee of pay after next week. Some of you may have worked for small businesses and have had the unfortunate and painful experience of a small business fucking up its payroll and paying you late, which is a really horrible experience or messing up your uh, your pay or, or, or messing up how many hours you worked. This is not a small business. This is a company with salaried employees with with people who are are who, who with people who have enormous bills. This is not a a company that is being run by a mom and pop. This is being run by nobody. There's nobody there to help these people if their paycheck goes wrong tomorrow. If they were paid the wrong amount of hours, shit out of luck. If you don't get paid at all, shit out of luck. And if they don't hire somebody to do that in the next week, you're shit out of luck. One of the biggest social media companies in the world and the employees there have less guarantee of pay than if you worked at mom and pop's fucking butt crack grease fucking emporium. And their tax team is gone. Their tax team is all the... What's the one rule in America? You don't fuck with the IRS. The IRS got Al Capone. The IRS got one of the most notorious gangsters in all time. Not the FBI, not the CIA, not the police, not the NYPD. The IRS. You do not fuck with the IRS and they don't have a tax team for a enormous company that just had a transaction, was just purchased for $45 billion. 45 billion USD and they don't even have a tax team. That is, yeah, IRS open up, boom. It's gonna be like fucking Call of Duty Warzone in there. Fucking boom, kicking down the door, instant death. They got Al Capone. Elon Musk is not gonna dodge the IRS. Elon Musk is not Al Capone. Elon Musk does not have a bunch of guys around him who would literally go to the death, would, would gun themselves, you know, would fight the cops. Elon Musk doesn't have that, okay? He does have a bunch of sweaty, uh, 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 out of shape redditors who are willing to go, oh, Elon, daddy, let me lick your boots. <laughs> That's it. Those guys aren't as hard as fucking Al Capone's guys. IRS, open up, bitch! Let that sink in, okay? Let that, let that sink in. The IRS is coming knocking, my man. And not just that, but the Department of Labor, the SEC, a congressional hearing. You're fucked. Did you guys see him memeing around with, uh, with fucking uh, Senator Ed Markey? Hold on, let me show you this. Oh my God. Let me just, oh. Where's the response? Hey, wait, where's the response? I gotta see the response here. It's actually really hard to find shit on Twitter right now because it, because the search is working so slowly. All right, here we go. Let me just let me just bring this up real quick, okay? Here we go. 
Ah, there we go. Okay, Ed Markey. This is a a, US, a sitting U.S. senator from Massachusetts, I believe. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to go over the donations after this. Thank you. A Washington Post reporter was able to create a verified account impersonating me. I'm asking for answers from Elon Musk, who is putting profits over people and his debt over stopping disinformation. Twitter must explain how this happened and how to prevent it from happening again. So a sitting U.S. senator was successfully impersonated by a journal, a reporter at the Washington Post, a whistleblower, essentially. They said, uh... Dude, you need to be worried. I just made an account that could fake being you. And this made the senator go, holy shit, this is a huge security concern. Because it's a huge security concern. And this was Elon Musk's response. Hold on. Again, the most soy Reddit thing. Perhaps it is because your real account sounds like a parody. And also, why does your PP pee -pee have a mask? <laughs> Oh my god. He said pee pee. Oh, oh daddy Elon. He said pee pee. Oh, why does it have a ma- oh, oh, oh. Based anti-vaxxer. Based Elon. Based daddy Elon. Motherfucker lost a $45 billion gamble. Motherfucker lost a $45 billion gamble. Okay? Why is your, why is your pee pee have a mask? That was his response. But let me just show you. Let me just show you what Ed Markey's response was. Okay, ready? One of your companies is under an FTC consent decree. Auto Safety Watchdog NHTSA is investigating another for killing people, and you're spending your time picking fights online. Fix your companies or Congress will. I wish I had my soundboard up, but this will just have to do. Okay. Here we go. Let me just let me just show you. We just need there. That ought to be good enough. Can we speed this up? Can I speed up this 10-hour vine boom? Wow, that actually distorts it quite a lot. There you go. There you go. There you have it. Why does your pee, pee have a mask, bro? You just fucked up so hard. It's literally just, again, this guy has bad blood with sitting U.S. senators who did, who do not have any, like, they didn't have any bad blood with him. His stupid decisions made it possible for someone to impersonate a U.S. senator. The U.S. senator got scared because Obviously, that's concerning that somebody could easily impersonate you with a blue check online. And Elon Musk's response was to meme about it and make fun of the guy. Fucking incredible. Let me see if I can get a number. Let me see if I can get a number on the current Twitter news before I do my little summary here. Holy moly. Here we go. This was published 50 minutes, 43 minutes ago on the New York Times. Elon Musk's Twitter teeters on the edge after another 1,200 leave. Mr. Musk sent emails on Friday asking to learn about Twitter's underlying technology as key infrastructure teams have now been decimated. This is the New York Times, okay? I believe the New York Times is the most read newspaper in the entire world. The New York Times has now, now has information that key infrastructure teams have been fucking decimated. Anyone who actually writes software, oh yeah, and this was another one. Oh yeah, this happened. Elon Musk sent a flurry of emails uh, to Twitter employees on Friday morning with a plea. Anyone who actually writes software, please report to the 10th floor at 2 p.m. today. He wrote in a two-paragraph message, which was viewed by the New York Times. Thanks, Elon. 
Um, thanks, Elon. About 30 minutes later, Mr. Musk sent another email saying he wanted to learn about Twitter's tech stack, a term used to describe a company's software and related systems. Then in another email, he asked some people to fly to Twitter's headquarters in San Francisco to be in person. Twitter is teetering on the edge as Mr. Musk remakes the company after buying it for $44 billion. The billionaire has pushed relentlessly to put his imprint on the media service, etc., etc. So at the end of October, they dropped to about 3,700 after mass layoffs. And now the numbers that they have is that they've lost another 1,200. So they were at 3,700. Now they're down to 2,500 confirmed. From 8,000 employees to less than 2,500. And by the way, that's probably not an accurate number because I'm sure many people have not wanted to come forward with this. Here you go. Oh, this was the other part. This is great. Watch this. One of the teams known as Twitter Command Center, a 20 person organization crucial to preventing outages and technology failures during high traffic events, had multiple people from around the world resign, two former employees said. The core services team, which handles computing architecture, was cut to four people from more than 100 yesterday. Yesterday, they lost 96 members from their team on the core services team. Other teams that deal with how media appears in tweets or how profiles show pro follower counts were down to zero members. Wednesday offered a clean exit and 80% of the remaining were gone. Peter Klaus, a, s a senior software engineer, tweeted on Thursday about the departures on his team. Three out of 75 engineers remained. He said this on Twitter that he quit on Thursday. So the software engineering team had three members and then the leader of the software engineering team left. That's the newest news. This article came out like literally 30 minutes ago, 30 or 40 minutes ago. And oh yeah, sorry, one more thing before I go to my little summary, okay? The best people are saying, so I'm not super worried, Elon Musk tweeted. Bro, talk about the sorest loser that has ever lived. Like I said, an absolute, just a, just cucked to his soul, to his absolute essence. The, the worst, most pathetic, insecure little loser you can possibly imagine. Fires a ton of people, literally, not just fires them, but gives them an ultimatum by which they either have to choose to work long, intense hours in an office that they previously did not have to work in, or else, and then he just makes fun of them. He's all oh, the best people are staying around, so I'm not super worried. Dude, you don't have anybody left. It doesn't matter how good the best people are. Twitter is a international social media company, and everybody can feel the cracks. Antifa Pyro says, I have legit never seen greater soy levels in a human being, and you might never see it again. Elon Musk might end up being the last of the soy boys. Elon Musk's spectacular failure is like a lesson to every uh, puffed up rich boy Redditor. It might just decimate the, 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 the Reddit soy mentality entirely. And honestly, good fucking riddance. For the record, since the since the early days of this stream, I have been an Elon Musk hater. I will admit it. I will admit it. I am a hater. I am a part of the player haters club, okay? When it comes to Elon Musk. But the reason that I'm a member of the player haters club when it comes to Elon Musk is sp specifically because he's always been like this. He is, he, he is super self-important in a way that completely is disconnected from reality. He treats people who treat him well like absolute shit. He is literally incapable of admitting when he does something wrong and instead he just posts through the pain constantly. And his humor while he posts through the pain is so bereft of anything even remotely enjoyable 
that even the people who like Elon Musk don't fucking laugh at his goddamn jokes. Yeah, let me check. Let me check that. Yeah, let me check Zoe's page. Let me see. Let's get some live updates real quick. New Elon, new email from Elon Musk to the engineers. Please be prepared to do brief code reviews as I'm walking around the office. That's it. That's the whole email. The email was sent to all Twitter employees. Musk says the top priority for the company this weekend is ensuring that Twitter does an awesome job to support the World Cup, according to an all-staff email. This event has required a ton of work over the years from engineers and has prompted widespread global outages. He's gone from communicating very little with Twitter employees to sending multiple one-line emails to the entire company. Multiple ex-Twitter sources are now telling me that Robin Wheeler, the sales leader who Musk begged to stay at the company days ago when she tried to resign, has now been fired. It's hard to see how this plays out with advertisers already fleeing the platform en masse. I'm having, oh yeah, this is the tweet that was like, report to the 10th floor at 2 p.m., Twitter's former head of trust and safety on why he left the company. Hey, let's read this. Oh my God, he got published in, Yoel Roth got published in fucking New York Times. Let's read it. Let's see what he has to say. Ooh, this sounds actually super interesting, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to 12 foot ladder that shit. This month, so this is by Yoel Roth. Now, Yoel Roth, for those who don't know, was the head of, um, of trust and safety at Twitter. So like, this guy was handling the most heinous shit on Twitter and he's been doing it for a long time. Let's hear. This month, I chose to leave my position leading trust and safety at Elon Musk's Twitter. My teams were responsible for drafting Twitter's rules and figuring out how to apply them consistency to hundreds of millions of tweets per day. In my more than seven years at the company, we exposed government-backed troll farms meddling in elections, introduced tools for contextualizing dangerous misinformation, and yes, banned President Donald Trump from the service. The Cornell professor Tarleton Gillespie called teams like mine the custodians of the internet. All right, dude, you do it for, well, okay, he doesn't do it for free. Okay, you do it for probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. We get it. Here we go. In a news release announcing his agreement to acquire the company, Mr. Musk laid out a simple thesis. Free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy and Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. He said he planned plan to revitalize Twitter by eliminating spam. That's not true. S Holy shit, the amount of spam that have been, has been in my DM inbox, I have gotten, like, I'm not kidding you, like a tenfold increase in spam. Holy shit, they failed on that already. Since the deal closed on October 27th, many of the changes made by Mr. Musk and his team have been sudden and alarming for employees and users alike, including rapid fire layoffs and ill-fated foray into reinventing the verification system. A wave of employee resignations caused the hashtag rip Twitter to trend on the, on the site on Thursday, last night. Not for the first time, alongside questions about whether a skeleton crew of remaining staff can keep the service, which is now 16 years old afloat. Yet when it comes to content moderation, much has stayed the same. Twitter's rules continue to ban a wide range of lawful but awful speech. Mr. Musk has insisted that the, publicly that the company's practices and policies are unchanged. Are we just in the early days or has the self-declared free speech absolutist had a change of heart? The truth is that even Elon Musk's brand of radical transformation has unavoidable limits. Uh, let's see. In response, Mr. Musk empowered my team to move more aggressively to remove hate speech, censoring more content, not less. Our actions did work. Before my departure, I shared data about Twitter's enforcement of hateful conduct, showing that by some measures, Twitter was actually safer under Musk than it was before. Marketers have not shied away from using the power of the purse. In the days following Mr. Musk's acquisition, the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, a key ad industry, published an open call to adhere to existing commitments to brand safety. It is perhaps for this reason that Mr. Musk said he wants to move away from ads as Twitter's primary revenue source. Again, we did the math. That's insane. His ability to make decisions unilaterally about the site's future is constrained by a marketing industry he neither controls nor has managed to win over. That's a good point right there that is that's a really good point 
that like as much as he as much as he wants as much as he can be a tyrant inside the walls of Twitter, he he does not and cannot and never will control the marketing industry, which is way bigger than he will ever be. I'm just trying to br browse through here as to why. I want to see the reason he left. Hmm. Oh, shit. In my time at Twitter, representatives of the app stores regularly raised concerns about content available on our platform. On one occasion, a member of an app review team contacted Twitter. So here's where, what he's saying here is, this gives Apple and Google enormous power to shape the decisions that Twitter makes. Th okay, hold on, let me explain this real quick because I don't want to read his entire thing, it's too much. Um, Apple and Google control the app stores for, that's right, your phone. So uh, Apple and Google have possibly maybe the most control over the internet, over the, may, maybe only like, literal payment processors are more powerful. And the reason for that is because if Apple bans your app from their store, you just lost access to basically half of the world's devices. And if Google bans access to your app on the Google store, you just lost the other half, or actually it's honestly more because more people use Android. And that affects globally, by the way. So when Apple or Google bans an app because of safety issues, it is it will kill the app. Because everybody uses mobile these days. It's just how it is. So that's what he's talking about here. In my time at Twitter, representatives of app stores regularly raise concerns about content available. On one occasion, a member of an app review team contacted Twitter saying with consternation that he had searched for hashtag boobs and the Twitter app and was presented with, well, exactly what you'd expect. Another time, on the eve of a major feature release, a reviewer sent a screenshot of several days old tweets containing an English language racial slur, asking Twitter representatives whether they should be permitted to appear on the service. Reviewers hint that the app approval could be now delayed or perhaps even withheld entirely if issues are not res resolved to their satisfaction, although the standards for resolution are often just implied. Even as they appear to be driven largely by manual checks and anecdotes, these review procedures have the power to derail company plans and trigger all hands on deck crises for weeks or months at a time. Can you guys imagine if Google or Apple decides that, that Twitter is so unsafe because of the rampant impersonation going on right now and the fact that they literally don't have compliance teams and the fact that they literally don't have a working security team and the fact that they don't have a payroll and decide to ban it from the, from the App Store? Do you know how genuinely, unbelievably, incredibly fucked up that would be? Do you know how screwed Twitter would be? I can't even begin to tell you. Holy moly, you can imagine this. Here we go, here's his reason. Yoel Roth says, it was for this reason that I chose to leave the company. A Twitter whose policies are defined by edict and ha has little need for a trust and safety function dedicated to its principal development. He, that's saying that he left because Elon Musk is an authoritarian freak. He said he didn't want to, want to work for a king. Is Twitter dead? Yes, Twitter is dead, 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 dead. And when I say dead, I don't mean that the website is literally not up. Although that might be very much in the books in the next couple of days. Uh, it is very possible, given that all of the employees are leaving today, it is very possible that within the next two days, the site just actually goes down and stays down or becomes inaccessible to a large number of people. There have already been widespread reports of... Um, people getting locked out of their account because they can't get uh, two-factor authentication, which by the way is a massive security risk in the modern era. You should always have two-factor authentication on all of your shit. I know it's annoying, turn that shit on. Turn two-factor on, you bitches. Good imps use two-factor and stay safe. Two-factor authentication has been having issues. People have been having severe issues get uh, like with the, the app even being able to recognize that their account belongs to them. 
um, that they're logged in and they're getting forcibly logged out and they can't get in because of the verification issues. It is very, very possible that in the next couple of days, Twitter just actually like completely dies and that you just can't get onto the website. But what's more likely is that Twitter will continue to degrade in performance and it will continue to degrade in performance and it will never stop. It will never come back from that degraded performance. Uh, they could hire a whole bunch of new people on a short notice, a bunch of people who will be untrained and unprepared. And if that's the case, a lot of the issues that are now showing up on Twitter will simply never be resolved. Um, but the reason why I say that Twitter is dead, dead, dead is twofold. It's not just that the website is actually going to go down. It's the fact that there is zero customer, uh, zero customer confidence, first of all. And secondly, um, that there is a, a zero investor uh, confidence. All of uh, Twitter's investors are scared as fuck. They can see all of this. This is being published in the most read newspaper in the world. Everyone knows. All of their investors know that Twitter is shitting the bed. All of them know that there's nobody there making sure that people aren't stealing data. None of them know for sure if irate employees just stole a ton of Twitter's data. In fact, none of us know that any of our data is even remotely safe. For that reason, I would highly recommend uh, if you use the same password on Twitter that you use elsewhere, Go change your passwords elsewhere because I believe that from a lay from a lay perspective, I'm not a cybersecurity expert, but I'm knowledgeable enough. There is a good chance that there has already been significant security breaches. I don't know how deep it goes, but you should be really, really careful. Um, advertisers and investors and users are all aware that they have no promise of safety, that they have no promise of how the future is gonna look. Nobody can be verified right now because Twitter Blue is dead. So it's a dead, it's dead in the water. People have already begun leaving, so engagement is down. In short, Twitter is in an ultimate death spiral. Don't get your hopes up that Twitter's gonna bounce back. Don't get your hopes up that it's gonna go back to being fun again. It's just not. There's just basically, there, I, I can see almost no way that this site bounces back in any major way. It might limp forward. There's a small possibility. I don't know what the possibility is that they're able to even keep it up. But what we're seeing now is extremely highly publicized mass resignations. And keep in mind, every former employee, some of them who stayed on until the very end with Elon Musk, are saying that it's not safe on here anymore. These are the people who kept the site safe for a, nearly a decade. They're saying it's not safe anymore. We should take that seriously. We should take that very seriously, okay? Twitter is ruined. And it was ruined specifically. Just let this be, let this be, let that sink in, okay? Let this sink in, okay? It was ruined specifically because of a pathetic Reddit soy boy, cuck, loser, piece of shit, inhuman, cruel, grifting moron by the name of Elon Musk. And you can't even argue with me about that because he plastered his name all over every single one of these decisions. The state of Twitter right now, AKA dying on the floor and gasping, being smothered to death by the fact that there's literally no one there to put it back together again is Elon Musk's fault. And everyone for the rest of time should treat everything Elon Musk does with this exact same level of, uh, of, of clear eyedness. Okay. Because keep in mind, this isn't his first shindig. This isn't his first, uh, 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 chicanery. This isn't his first shenanigan. Uh, Elon Musk buys companies and then he puts people in power to do his will often to the detriment of the company and the people who are involved. Certain companies like SpaceX and Tesla have enough talent on hand that he doesn't have to do anything. Elon Musk, Elon Musk, everybody knows that Elon Musk doesn't do anything at Tesla. Elon Musk is an advertiser for Tesla. He's a public face and nothing more. The engineering team at Tesla is the backbone of that company. 
other people who are not Elon Musk, people that he paid for. He can buy things and that's it. And guess what? Motherfucker's broke. He can't buy shit. Motherfucker just lost a $44 billion bet. Did you know he got loans for that? Did you know he got loans from Merrill Lynch? Did you know that his the second largest investor is the Saudi royal family? Just so you know, I'm not making that up. Saudi Prince Alawid becomes the becomes Twitter's second largest shareholder. This is the the man himself. Oh yeah. Oh, oh look at that. A literal prince. Oh. Li oh. I would like to buy another mm. Send a pigeon. Send a pigeon so that they could buy me uh, buy me the, the Twitter. Twitter, that sounds good. I like Elon. Send a pigeon so that we can purchase it for the royal family. Bruh. When Elon Musk's 44 billion Twitter ac acquisition was finalized last Thursday, a few key questions remained. Chief among them, whether a group of 19 investors would follow through on the 7.1 billion equity commitment they made to, to Elon Musk. Elon Musk owns owes a lot of money to a lot of people, and all of these people are watching him blow his money away. Blow their money away. I don't know if you guys know this, but the, the Saudi royal family doesn't exactly take personal slights particularly well. I mean, they literally dismembered, unironically dismembered a journalist who wrote things critical of them. Like, they don't take this shit very well. And Elon Musk just pissed away billions of their dollars, not to mention the banks that he signed agreements to pay things back for. Elon Musk not only cucked himself, but he also cucked thousands of other people. And some of those people are very angry rich people who will not play nice with his soy boy bullshit. Okay? But there's one last thing. I know. I know. Mama, oh my god, mercy, we've been talking about Twitter for three hours, mercy! No, fuck you. I got one more funny thing to show you, okay? Which is the funniest thing yet. Because guess who got let back on Twitter today? Jordan B. motherfucking Peterson. The meat man himself. The, 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 the weeping, transphobe, meat-eating, a cum machine having dirty house, dirty underwear, dirty sock, grifter himself was allowed back on Twitter and we got to have one of the funniest tweets we've ever seen in the history of the website. Don't allow the anonymous troll demons to post with the real verified people, Elon Musk. Put them in their own hell, along with others like them. LOL, us bro! Bruh! Hyper users are narcissistic, Machiavellian, psychopathic, and sadistic. Really? And then he links to a Science Direct article, which says, Social media use and personality beyond self-reports and trait level assessments. Narcissistic and Machiavellian facets correlated with Instagram use. Intensity. In he linked to a thing about Instagram. Which is a fundamentally different platform than Twitter. But whatever. This is, this is it. And if you didn't know about this picture, this is literally what he was doing, okay? Unironically. Just imagine Jordan Peterson sitting at his desk like this going, ah! low bros the lulls low bros bro the call is coming from in the fucking house elon is the number one wait a second hold on i got a citation hold on hold on wait wait i can literally prove this oh oh here let me show you let me show you hold on where is it where's the where's the tweet i need it oh give it to me where's the fucking tweet you bitch give me the goddamn tweet Oh, where is it? Oh, I just had it up here. The one where he, the one he deleted, where he said it was for the lulls. After, after he argued with that senator that I was mentioning, 
Elon Musk tweeted for like five minutes, I did it for the lulls, and then he deleted that. So he was, he is so cucked that he deleted his doing it for the lulls. But unironically, Jordan Peterson is talking about Elon Musk, okay? How the fuck does Jordan Peterson look at Elon Musk and not conclude that this guy is narcissistic, Machiavellian, psychopathic, and sadistic, but Twitter users who disagree with Jordan Peterson are? You know, if Twitter was still around, I might make a meme, and it might go something like this. Is a psychologist goes insane with a picture of Jordan Peterson's face on it. Because, guys, I'm sorry. I don't really care how you slice it. Jordan Peterson is one of the most mentally unwell people this planet has ever seen. And letting him back on Twitter was a huge mistake for his own health. Okay? For his own goddamn health. Also, people have been tweeting this at Elon Musk all day. Because Tesla has been fucking tanking just because of the name recognition. Even though... Elon Musk isn't actually all that involved at Tesla anymore. They've been losing their stock, not only because their product sucks and just flatten two people in China, but also because it's associated with Elon Musk. Just, oh my dear God. It just doesn't get better than this. And by that, I mean, it doesn't get more pathetic than this. So let me end our Twitter super segment this incredibly long, incredibly detailed riff session, dancing on the grave of Twitter with something a little bit genuine, okay? I'm just gonna, I know I did it before, but hey, this one is for you all. This is for you all who are gonna be watching this video in the future, okay? Twitter is a really, was a really awesome site. It's dead, okay? You just gotta accept it. It's fucking gone. All right, whatever, whatever type of Twitter is present going forward, it's going to be like Tumblr after the collapse. It's going to be a shell of its former self. In fact, it's actually in a worse place than Tumblr because Tumblr had established blogs and they basically just purged not safe for work stuff. Anyway, still killed Tumblr. This is so much worse than what happened to Tumblr. If you think that what happened to Tumblr was bad, this is a thousand times worse, okay? Um, it's dead, accept it, okay? I had a great time on Twitter. I had a really, really great time on Twitter. I met all of my current partners thanks to Twitter. We were able to connect and meet each other and find shared interests. And ultimately now we all live together. From We all came from all over different places in the United States and we're all living together now and quite happy about it. And that was thanks to what Twitter enabled. A lot of people have said that there uh, are a number, and I know that's a little bit of a, a, a vague statement, but let's just say there have been a number of social events that have occurred that may have never reached international attention if it wasn't for Twitter. One of those that many people have talked about is uh, Ferguson. Some of you may, may recall the protests that happened in Ferguson. Um, and uh, a lot of the earliest videos the early buzz about Ferguson happened on Twitter. In fact, Twitter was largely considered to be the like hub of news about Ferguson until much later when the mainstream news finally caught up with it. The, the events in Ferguson might have never gotten the attention of the world if it wasn't for a platform like Twitter. So while we've been riffing and joking about the death of Twitter, the simple fact is that actually a lot of really incredible things happened on Twitter. Um, Twitter was a deeply flawed platform with a lot of issues, but it facilitated an incredible amount of human creativity, human connection, and honestly, political progress. There was a lot of harm too, and I think it's okay for us to acknowledge both of those things. It is sad that a lot of art is going to be lost forever. It is sad that a lot of people wrote genuinely meaningful and moving things in the form of tweets that w that are now going to disappear forever in into dust, like literally like tears in the rain, okay? And I mean that. There are people, there are artists that I follow right now whose main platform has been Twitter because they were able to build success on Twitter. They were able to get their art out to people who liked it, to find supporters on Twitter. Hell, the earliest days of this channel 
were heavily boosted by Twitter. And of course, that's changed over time. But in the early days, I got a lot of my growth. A lot of new viewers would see my tweets about my stream and my topics and would come check it out. A lot of you may have even found this stream because of Twitter. There are comedy accounts like Drill. Well, thankfully, Drill has been like archived elsewhere. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of that is just going to be lost forever to never be recovered. There are going to be, we don't even, we don't, we won't even know what we've forgotten. And in some ways, it's a pretty major cultural loss. Um, Twitter is a stupid website in a lot of ways, and it's a toxic website in a lot of ways. But the simple fact of the matter is that by the nature of the way that it connected people, it facilitated a lot of genuinely amazing and good things. And those things are going to be gone forever. No one, except for the lucky people who might have archived them, will remember them. And that's pretty sad. For me, uh, all the, the people that I met on Twitter are here with me. They're connected with me. And I've connected with them off of Twitter, as I have always encouraged people to do. I have always, always on this show, my imps who are listening now, you guys know this, I say this all the time, that you cannot just connect online. You have to connect beyond the internet. The internet is a, a connection facilitator, but you can't live all your time on the internet. You can't only mediate your connections through the internet. You have to connect beyond the internet. Unfortunately, Twitter going down makes it harder for those connections to start. But it doesn't mean that the ones that you already have uh, are, are, can't be built upon, that they can't be, the connections can't be maintained on other platforms or through other tools. And it also doesn't mean that there won't be new ones in the future. There's going to be other sites that do similar things to Twitter. And in some ways, maybe we can all sort of agree, um, you know, maybe we should all, maybe we can all sort of agree that maybe the future is a little bit exciting. Maybe Twitter's time has come and it's time for us to move to greener pastures and find new ways of connecting. And maybe there's a lot of potential in those new ways to connect. Also, yes, Demon speak Speaker, I was actually just about to talk about that. Demon Speaker says, you should bring up a point of archiving because information is only going to get more scarce going forward. I actually was talking, before I even got on this stream, I was talking to my partner Doe about this. And yes, uh, I wanted to do one little, one last little touch on this bit, which is please get in the habit of archiving things, good things and bad things. If it's digital, learn to archive it, save screenshots, save archives on the internet archive, save these things, not only for your own well-being. I know firsthand, I have had so many people tell lies about me on the internet that I have then been able to prove false because I had an archive. People lie on the internet all the time, and they especially lie when it can be easily hidden. You delete a Twitter post and nobody archived it, that shit's gone. Nobody can prove what was there. And that's gonna happen en masse. There's gonna be a lot of things that happen that no one will now be able to prove simply because the service is gone. Get in the habit of archiving things off the website that it happened on, okay? screenshots, videos, recordings, using the internet archive. Please, please, I'm begging you, my imps, please get in the habit of archiving things. You don't have to archive everything, but if something significant happens, consider taking a picture of it. Consider screenshotting it or saving it in the internet archive because online, a lot of things are ephemera, but they shouldn't be. There's a lot of things that happen online that we should remember. There's a lot of history happening and we lose it because of shitheads like Elon Musk. We lose it because capitalism and capitalists don't give a fucking shit about history. They don't give a shit about our lives. They don't give a shit about our memories. They just get thrown away. 